Shrines will be where Game 4 takes place in between Simplicity and Hero's Hearth. Simplicity's chosen Shrines, interesting point of note here. Hero's Hearth generally bans Infernal Shrines. In a majority of their matches, they sometimes, very rarely, will change that up versus uh, certain teams where they are far and above better on one map than another one. They didn't ban it here. They banned Tomb the Spider Queen, generally a map they like. And now, Simplicity has a chance, maybe, of getting another win versus Hero's Hearth. Urel off the table, unless somebody's crazy. Alex Straza, though. First pick potential in with some of our teams, but definitely first pick potential on this battleground and has been for a while. I wonder if she'll make it through the ban phase. I can't see Yorel making it through, not on this battleground, but we do know a lot of teams do prefer Sonya on this battleground due to the control she has over the shrine and the impact that she has. So there's a lot to consider, I think, for both teams. I love the diversity of the battlegrounds in this match, in this series. Just it, it, all, it has a different meta every time we change battlegrounds and it looks entirely different. Battlefield of Eternity has its own, Infernal has its own. Uh, you know, Dragonshire, obviously, we still don't know what that one is. Uh, Towers of Doom, Globals. What is Dragonshire's meta? Like, is Urel. There one? Urel is the meta. <laughs> You're really going to go there? You really think I wouldn't? <laughs> Here we go! Game four between Simplicity and Heroes Hearth Esports, and now we get to see why does Heroes Hearth so often ban shrines? Is it enough? Enough of a sore point for them that Simplicity can take us all the way to game five? Let's find out. Is that the protector dance you're doing? I don't know what you're talking about. I never it's dance. It's literally robot arms I that you're doing. I never dance. Robot forward fist pumps. That's the robot. I don't think you understand how the robot works because the, the last part was there, the first part. <laughs> <laughs> These are some super advanced I had, robots. I had a, <laughs> my robot arm, a screw was loose, and so it was but how does your How does your left arm move like that? Is this the more advanced robots? Yeah, when you have a certain circuitry in place then and more joints, then you can do things like the wave. I, But I don't know what you're talking about because I didn't dance in the first place. Right. This is all serious business all the time. Back in the day when the robot was invented, the robot dance, that's what robots move like. The next generation of humans will be like, what the hell is wrong with your robots? Like, why did they move like that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but Diablo banned out. Alex Straza does not make it through simplicity. Are you willing to give up Urel? And if so, is it because you're going to go Sonya? Genji would still be up too, and Genji has not been let through the bands yet this series. It is Infernal Shrines, and you want Shrine Clear, but having someone who can uh, force a fight on you is always terrifying with a Genji. These are tough decisions to be made with this last ban. I'd rather deal with a Genji than a URL. So would Simplicity. I think that makes it tough. Hero's sense. Hearth has not really been a Genji team since their early time in phase one and their success rate with it was extremely limited we saw them tr experiment at mid-season brawl with mcintyre flexing onto different heroes clearly they've figured those things out mcintyre strictly is in that solo but we will get the genji iceberg my dude that's how i view heroes hearth esports and they're drafting this part until people have forced them off of things like diablo like johanna like blaze which the third ban has started to do, started to do last week too. It's just, there is a whole lot more to this team than meets the eye, I am certain of it. And now we're gonna get to see how their Genji fares. We have not seen a lot of Johanna yet. Hanzo, the pickup, Malfurion again, mm -hmm. the pickup. Jimmy Rayner is still available. Give him some pepper, splash damage is there, but so is Phoenix. This, I. It's terrifying. Johanna Phoenix, Johanna whatever, Phoenix whatever. And here's where they've been playing a lot of Rhaegar, who suits Genji quite well in a draft. They're going to get Murden. Oh. Ooh. This is. Okay, there's there's the elements that you have to have to run solo support Abathur. Mobility, self-sustain. Murden has self-sustain. Genji, 
Deflect. Kind of technically with the self sustain with his mobility. And mobility. Yeah. Burden has mobility. That those are the makings of a solo support app. You can't do it otherwise. We might still see Karazim when you go full aggression. Junkrat's gonna be banned out, which says to me, Medivh. We have not seen too much Medivh, but if you ever watch Hosty's stream, he is a Medivh monster. That's, he, I think half of his games played are Medivh. He is. I'm not shaking my head because then I'm shaking my head because they already have Hanzo, and I would much rather see Hosty play Hanzo. I agree, I agree. But Simplicity themselves did get a, a win over, who was it, they, I think Octalysis maybe? On Shrines with Junkrat. So it could also just be the uh, respect that he has, the dual soaking that he can have. He has Ripper Air at 13, a lot of mobility himself. But that is an interesting band to see. So when there's been so many ranged assassin focus in the bands, sometimes Junkrat does poke his rodenty head out. Two heroes that can survive versus the aggression. We still just as easily could see a Rhaegar or a Karazim. Rhaegar and Karazim are also excellent clones for Abathur. Mm -hmm. The amount of healing you can get and damage. They gotta have somebody who's gonna be there for the shrine. Like, is it a Grey Mane? Uh a mage of some kind, like a Jaina. Jaina is also an Ab or an Abathur clone. Aha. Uh -huh. All self-sustain. That is, you have to have self-sustain. And every single hero does have that. Raynor lacks the mobility, but he does not have anybody diving on him. Look, straight up, you know, Zuna used to play Uther whenever they would get in these weird situations. And you have so much shrine control. I would take a battle Uther all day right now. Oh, Ooh. baby! <laughs> Give it to me, Zuna! What a call! Battle Uther! <laughs> Bring in the hammer! <laughs> Whoa! This is a perfect... You have so much damage between Hanzo <laughs> and Phoenix. I'm laughing at your excitement levels. I, look, I think you this is an excellent pick. It this is, is an awesome. excellent pick. The stun control, the extra support that you have. Yeah. You can, I think Twilight Dream will be the pick, but if you want to survive an Abathur clone, you get Tranquility and you just survive the onslaught. You have the armor, you have the sustain healing from Malfurion. Everybody lives. Malfurion still has Ice Block for a few more weeks in competitive. So you just hop that bad boy, Ice Block, survive the onslaught, and you're fine. And then Zuna comes in with the Hammer of the Lightbringer. Hits you with the one hammer, hits you with the second with Divine Storm, hits you with the third if you have been yeah, addiction. because he will go damage. Oh, he's going <laughs> Divine Storm. If he goes Divine Shield, I will be very sad. I will be so sad. But until then, hey. I'm going to dream of the Divine yeah. Storm. Let's go. Let's do it. We're going into Inferno Shrines. Zuna Uther returns versus the solo supporting Abathur of Heroes Heart that we have not seen in a hot minute. I don't even know what to make of the draft from Hero's Heart. That all makes sense. Everybody on that team can live. Everybody on that team can heal. You have a bunker. Genji has mobility, but when Genji's mobility gets a hammer dropped on it, that is when things can fall apart. Let's talk laning for simplicity. Kazuna <laughs> has been the solo laner, though in having Phoenix, there is some adaptations that can be made there. They also have Johannes. They have some good wave clear be added to once you see explosive arrows, which is likely to be the pick for Hosty at level four. Hero's Hearth, they also have some uh, options for what they want to do. Genji can try to hold on to a lane. Of course, Blaze will be somewhere in a lane. And Genji's going for a good old fashioned well snipe with that Abther hat. Yeah. Nice disrupt, dismount there by Ishbu. We get a hammer, we get a mine. And that is enough time for Arthlon to get out of there. See if we get some roots put down by Tiger JK. No roots needed. Phoenix in the top versus the solo lane of Blaze. Makes a lot of sense. Yes. The caveat to that is K1 Pro has not been a solo laner for a while. This may be something that Hero's Hearth could take advantage of with those Genji rotations, with the Abathur hats too. See if they can try to get a pick on him. They're going. 
They are going the number one thing as a Phoenix player in this situation. There you have you get zero value in pushing the lane out. There is absolutely nothing you accomplish pushing a lane out. Shield gone. Health bar falling, draining. He lives. Think about what you accomplish by pushing a lane out. And it is nothing. So as a Phoenix in this situation, and the threat of a gank is ever present. You and he's doing a good job now. You don't have to attack those minions. Mm -hmm. Much more disciplined approach. That first gank attempt will put the fear in you. I can guarantee you that much. Well, the nice thing is that though he did take a ton of damage, he is a phoenix and he has shield capacitor. And that is enough that it starts to build up once you haven't taken damage for long enough. So he's able to stay in that lane. He doesn't have to have someone else come and rotate up uh, to hold onto the lane while he backed, which keeps simplicity in this game. Because mark my words, they do not want to start falling behind in structures versus this Abathur. I wonder if we'll get a mule this game. It seems likely. Zuna brings the hammer in return onto Arthalon. He's trying to walk away. The body block is there. The stun, this. Nice moon fire and a self heal there by Zuna is enough to walk away. I was certain he would be first blood. <laughs> Trust me, I held my breath for a moment. <laughs> he would even turn back around to deliver one final stun. He's at 61 stacks of Hammer of the Lightbringer, so he is almost to the necessary 75 before he's able to get the cooldown reduction for even more stuns. Well, the other thing I like picked up here is this sense exposed. You, you can hit multiple people, and they take that bonus damage. Abathur can only heal so much at a time. Yes, everybody does have the self-sustain, but it's not a guarantee. So it does add to the, hey, you don't have a support, so I'm going to bring more damage to you. Try and heal through this. Later on, talking about damage, having the Hammer of the Lightbringer and then getting well met at 13 to try to reduce some of the damage for whomever from Heroes Hearts is coming in, likely to be on that Genji because they're going to be trying to get that lockdown on him anyway. But maybe even if Crowen is Crone playing the Rainer? He is. If Crowen comes out too far on that Rainer, might also be a, a target for them to be able to get a kill from that. Uther starting to make his way up. 12 Skeletal Defenders. Heroes are not showing any interest in getting this first shrine. They are pushing the bottom lane. They want to try to escalate the situation, the experience in their favor. Yeah, which is why they're sending Phoenix down. And to put this into perspective, what Heroes Hearth is doing by leaving Murden and Blaze on the shrine is they're stealing. Every time you steal one Skeletal Defender away, you're denying it from your opponent. You're denying the speed at which they can pick up the Punisher. And so every time you deny, 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 it just enables the other lanes to continue to push, which is why we now see structures falling in the bottom. We see an experience advantage on the side of Hero's Hearth. You have Mule to heal up whatever damage this Punisher does. And so Hero's Hearth is making all the right plays around this. See how aggressive Simplicity chooses to be here, because they have to minimum trade out a wall with the both towers. That was the shortest Mule life I think I've probably ever seen. Interesting Blaze build I want to talk about in a second from McIntyre, as we see quite a change up here. But for the moment, that was a not super impactful Punisher for Simplicity. A very swift rotation from a Hero's Hearth marked by a lot of damage to take it out and a lot of damage in the bottom lane to get a kill on K1 Pro. Now chasing down Tiger JK, who drops the roots and the iron skin so that no other casualties are reported in from Simplicity. This is early game Hero's Hearth with an Abathur. This will look entirely different as the Punishers become more meaningful. But if Hero's Hearth can establish a lead far enough in advance off their early game play, it is very difficult to fight into this Abathur style composition of Hero's Hearth. So their job, generally like, well, we've got an Abathur composition. We'll come back in the later game once we hit 10. It is the exact opposite with this style of play on Infernal Shrine. So what Heroes Hearth is doing with the half level lead now is exactly what they intended. It's exactly what they planned and they are executing their plan very well right now. What do you think about this blaze build? It's it's wild. The cooldown reduction at four, I saw you hovering that. Yeah. I mean, it gives you more opportunities to heal up, self heal mm -hmm. and self sustain in there. The bonus damage I guess if you're going more oil, you might as well go more damage since you'll have it more often. Your thoughts? Because 
It caught me off guard. Yeah, no, it's it's the same. I wonder if... Mm, not versus the composition of simplicity. Occasionally we've seen flame stream at level 13 because it reduces spell power. And that could go with the... Uh, well, uh, somewhat, and that you're building into it, but... The crossfire, I think, is more interesting, interesting to me at 7. The... Uh, additional healing, trying to have your cooldowns up more often. It's one reason why we see Neural Stim Pack so much too, is having all those cooldowns up more often. It's going to give him some more shrine, shrine control, but also just try to get more of the self heal from him. Uh, the Raider grabbed the aggro, but... Is, yeah. he, is he looking for more self heal? Because he's taking combustion? No. So yeah, I guess if you're going all in, you might as well literally go all in. The Zuna mentality, because we got a divine storm. Wouldn't expect anything different. The, tran the tranquility not being picked up, I think, is more surprising. But if you're looking to end a fight quickly and you have double support and you can rely on the sustain of your general healing and the armor and healing output of an Uther. And we got the bunker buster oh. and everything's been used. I, I heard falls. It. There we go. Yeah, I saw, I was looking at the heroic abilities of Simplicity about to talk about the Bunker Buster, and all of a sudden I just see all of those heroic abilities. Divine Storm is used Start as going. well. Mm -hmm. Blessed Shield, Divine Storm, Twilight Dream, and Planet Cracker they to give a, a kill move. on Murden. They gotta be super fast here because he's gonna be back in a few seconds. Zuna, eat some damage. Johanna, the control there, very strong on this. 15 to 4. More Skeletal Defenders have spawned and those instantly explode behind Hanzo. And now they can play a more cautious and patient approach to this as the bunker comes out. Here comes the dive from Arthlon. No 13 for Tiger JK. There's some armor, there's some healing. X-Strike coming down. That confirms kill number one. BBJ on the clone almost takes down Hosty, but they do take K1 Pro down on the front side of things. And once Simplicity established that large of a lead, they needed to exit stage left much quicker. Tiger JK was out of mana on the shrine. Still Simplicity stuck around. And the dive of the double Genji was far too much to deal with. I think there were a lot of opportunities where they could have left. Their, when Tiger was on mana, they were trying to make sure that they could get more. After the bunker, when you see the bunker there too, try to back off and then re-engage in. Now it's such a huge issue for them that they were able to, they used so many heroic abilities to get the kill on Muradin, but that respawn timer is not long enough. Later on, that may be a different tale, but it just was not a long enough for them to freely get that shrine, especially with how fast Hero's Hearth has been in this series. Hero's Hearth instead has the Punisher now, and this fort is already gone. He was low on mana, but it's that situation alone that is the reason why Tranquility holds up so well against Abather clones, is that that onslaught, it doesn't last forever. And if you can just survive that, you can turn a team fight. Now, Hero's Hearth, that lead from the early to mid game, they now have the second Punisher, and this is a two-level lead, and with an Abather composition and a Mule on the other side, this is exactly what Heroes Hearth planned for. Simplicity, they're gonna have to find their way back through team fights. They've done it before, they're gonna have to do it again. But mobility and self-sustain is the name of the game when you play solo Abther, and Heroes Hearth has enough of that to avoid a lot of the team fights. Yeah, which is probably a, a reason why we see the addition of Twilight Dream along with the Divine Storm. It just feels like it's Simplicity's way to bring more aggression versus trying to wait and be patient with things out. Now they're gonna do this again. They use one, two, three, four, everything. Might have been overkill, but they're like, you know what, I'm tired of this. Get in the kill. All right, 30 seconds now where there's no Muradin and they need to do something with that. If you're gonna use that much, it cannot be just get a kill and walk away. They need to be aggressive as much as they can. They have to do something else. He's got to walk on there. That That's a start. Scatter arrow in this choke point. Arthlon forced to walk away. They cleared the minions. They got the camp. They need to start getting structures down. If you're going to push in on any structures, a camp is not enough. It does not do enough damage. A mule will heal all of that up. So they need to con commit to lanes or commit to kills, and finding kills is so difficult. Versus all the mobility. Very fair. Well, we saw the, it's honestly led a lot by Uther. The stun divine storm. But if you're fully reliant on heroics, those are long cooldowns to generate team fights. Yeah, I almost 
I almost wonder if it's worth to try to only use the uh, Dragon's Arrow and the Blessed Shield because they're so much shorter. But regardless, they have to start generating more kills out of this. Something. They're going to have another go of it, but unfortunately for them with the uh, map control that Heroes Hearth has, they have a near two level lead with 16, and we're going to have a shrine happening pretty soon in the mid. Simplicity, we saw them come back from a major deficit in that last game on Battlefield of Eternity. They have the composition to get kills as the standoff. Was there. They see Genji at the bottom. The minute Genji sees anybody, he goes away. And the Abther Mine placement to detect any of the rotations for BBJ, that's exactly what he needs to do. The mines are not for wave clear, they are not for doing damage. It is strictly to control rotations and control vision. And he is doing exactly what needs to be done with an Abther. Well, no 16 for simplicity. They have fought without a talent here before. It's what let them come back in the game. How much do they commit? Looks like they're fully in. Ice Block used. This time, though, it was some hesitation. And the hesitation on that, perhaps trying to make sure that they didn't use all their abilities there. This time ended up, because Phoenix was away, couldn't put any more damage on besides the Planet Cracker. Murden makes it into the bunker. McIntyre saves the Ishbu, and this is going from bad to worse if you're a simplicity. They flanked Arthalon. K1 Pro is staying mounted at max range so that he could continue to try and fight him. But the fact that he was the one that had to do the dismounting, that Genji would have been able to agility away. He also has movement speed from Abathur at 16 on the Carapace. So it's almost impossible. If you have no CC, which Phoenix slow is not hard CC, you're not getting the kill, and Genji goes right back into position. Well, you can see the gears turning for Simplicity. They're trying to figure this out. They've changed things up. They did not use all their abilities at once, but they did have a heavy commitment on that Murden that did not work out. But they have 16 now. They'll have uh, Planet Cracker back in 27 seconds. Divine Storm up faster. And Heroes Hearth is going to be close to their base, so maybe a place for Simplicity can get a fight in their favor and get more done, be able to have more room to chase people down. First though, they gotta clear out this Punisher. The Punisher is ripping apart the health bars with those arcane sentries. That has established so much control. There's a jump. If they wanted to force a fight, the time is now. They have a few more seconds. They do get that down. Zuna's going in deep. He's trying to get the stun. There's the Dragon Arrow. He's going to get another stun. The entire time, Genji has been whittling.